Lisa Marie Young was the eldest child and only daughter of Don Young and Joanne Martin. She has two younger brothers, Brian and Robin. Joanne was a member of the Tolokia First Nation and grew up in Nanaimo where she attended Breakin Elementary and Woodlands Secondary School. Young's maternal grandfather is actually the tribal chief of the Tolokia First Nation on the west coast of Vancouver Island. Those who knew Lisa described her as a hard-working, independent woman who was outgoing, confident but was also incredibly bubbly, someone you noticed right away. She just had a light about her, one friend said. Young was a vegetarian and a fitness enthusiast and was known to enjoy rollerblading. At the time of her disappearance, Lisa, now 21, lived with a roommate next door to her parents in a Barons Road apartment building. However, Lisa was getting ready to move on. Her father was helping her move into her own apartment in northern Nanaimo in just a matter of days, something she was excited about. Young was also looking forward to starting a new job she had just managed to secure, working in a call centre. She was also considering pursuing higher education with the hopes of becoming a television sports broadcaster. At approximately 11pm on the night of June the 29th 2002, Young left her home to go to a nightclub with friends. Lisa and her friends arrived at the Jungle nightclub at around 12am. The majority of her friends left around two hours later. During this evening out, Young and their friend Dallas Hulley were approached by a man who invited them to a house party, offering them a ride in his red, older model Jaguar. The friends accepted this offer. They went to the party and then to a second house party. Later in the evening, Lisa said she was hungry. Lisa, who was vegetarian, was unable to eat any of the food on offer at the previous parties and the driver of the Jaguar offered to take her to get some food. Around 4.30am Lisa called Dallas to tell him that the man took her to another house party instead of somewhere to eat. She was in his car and did not feel comfortable about the situation because she knew nobody at the party and was not sure of their whereabouts. The final time Lisa contacted Dallas was when she sent him a text message, reading, Come get me, they won't let me leave. It's unclear if Dallas got the text message, but no one came to get Lisa. Shortly afterwards, on July the 1st, Young's parents became concerned when they failed to hear from her. Although initially they put their concerns aside and put it down to her possibly just being busy, Young's former roommate visited to ask about Young's whereabouts and when they still couldn't get hold of her, Young's parents contacted the RCMP. The response from the RCMP was not exactly forthcoming. Her parents were told to call when she had been missing for 48 hours. However, an RCMP officer did actually come over to the Young's household later that evening to ask questions and get a photograph of Young. Within days of Young's disappearance, Lisa's mother and the RCMP both received information that Young was seen getting into a dark red or maroon late 80s Jaguar, but it wouldn't be until weeks later towards the back end of July that police identified the Jaguar's driver's home in the small town of Qualicum Beach. Police spoke to the owner of the car and then located the driver, the owner's grandson in Kamloops, BC. The RCMP then took the man into custody for questioning. The man, who had numerous run-ins with the law, including a history of fraud and assault charges, had also breached court orders and even assaulted a police officer. Young's mother was taken by the RCMP to a short meeting with the driver. 
Inside this interrogation room was a picture of Lisa on the wall and three words written on the whiteboard, murder, rape and accident. In this meeting she was asked by the RCMP to bring pictures of Lisa as a child in the hopes of unsettling the suspect and maybe forcing a confession. However, the plan failed. She later stated that she asked the man to tell her where her daughter was, and he replied, I can't, I'm sorry, I don't mean to disrespect your family. The man was later released with no charges made against him. Police did later state the driver was a person of interest. The car the man had been driving actually belonged to his grandmother, but by the time police got round to performing any sort of forensic examination of the car, it had been sold to new owners. It had also been completely steam cleaned. The grandmother, who was a prominent businesswoman at the time, threatened to take legal actions if her grandson was implicated any more in Lisa's disappearance. The grandmother passed away in 2011. Frustration was growing and the family, led by Young's grandfather, organised a tribal search and rescue into several massive search efforts in multiple locations. Search teams consisted of up to 30 volunteers as well as divers. The family contacted Young's bank and cell phone provider and were able to determine that the bank account had funds but no activity and the final signal from Young's phone was sent from the departure bay area of Nanaimo. Young's extended family and First Nations members put up a reward of $11,000 for information about the case. Lisa's family has been critical of the investigation. They have publicly complained about the attitudes of the officers who have been in contact with them and feel they only hear from investigators when they themselves call to ask for updates. They say the support they have been given has been neither helpful nor practical. Many have the opinion that if Lisa had been the daughter of a judge or a lawyer, the case may have been handled differently. Initially, the family tried to hide the fact that Joanne and Lisa were of First Nations ancestry as they feared the public would assume her to be a sex worker. For several months beginning in December 2019, billboard advertising space was rented alongside the Island Highway with large signage stating Lisa Marie Young missing. Funding for the rental and signage was raised through private sales of beaded red dress pins and earrings. In June 2021, a spokesman said new information has come to light. There is information he can't share, as it is an active investigation, but police have completed numerous searches in the last year based on new information coming in and those searches were extensive and detailed and we have more of these searches planned in the future. That was the last time the RCMP made a public statement about Lisa or the investigation into her disappearance.